Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where professionals in private practice, business owners, and entrepreneurs publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of business spotlights on remarkable people, places, and things from across the country and in your town. Joining me on this segment is Dana Corey. She's the founder of Dana Corey Coaching, and she's a business strategist and coach. Dana, welcome to the program. Thank you. It's so nice of you to have me. Dana, tell us a little bit about Dana Corey Coaching and the types of folks specifically that you help. I really work with people who have been in business for a while. They've been running their business uh, three years or many, sometimes many more. And most of them have no formal education in business. So they've gotten to this level of success all on their own, like grit, determination, vision, right? Doing this stuff. And they get to this place where everything that they've known that has helped them get to the, to the next place they're going, none of it works anymore. They're kind of stuck at the filling up the box, that the container that they had created. They're at the edges of the container, but they don't quite know how to open it, how to how to enlarge the container. Um, most of most people in this position think that there's stuff to do, and of course there's stuff to do. But the real hangup is up here in just being able to see what's possible at that next place for you. Like just being able to actually even imagine a bigger possibility, and that that bigger possibility is actually possible for you specifically is what holds that box in place. So these folks, okay. grit, determination, have gotten them to a certain place, busyness, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, what got me here is not necessarily going to get me there. Is this something that folks are immediately aware of, or do you, do you find that you need to create an awareness of it uh, for folks to reach out for help? Well, first the symptoms get to them. Like they are working 20 hours a day. Well, not really. I mean, very few people work 20 hours a day, but let's say 12 hours a day. They're working all the time, but they can never disengage. So they've ne they're just always thinking about work. They may have a staff, but they're allowing their staff to hold them hostage because they're so afraid of losing the people that they finally found to do the work that when it comes to actually pre holding them to the job standards or having expectations of them, they, they don't feel like they can. And so they feel like they're between a rock and a hard place. They have to keep their eyes on all the balls with this incredible fear that it's all just gonna blow up in their face. So that's the symptom. Many of them before they even come to me know that they're the problem. Not Very everybody, interesting. but many of them know. I'm the problem here and I can't figure out how to get out of my own way. And so I don't so much have to show them that, they, that that's the problem. They know, they just don't know what to do about it. So you mentioned a lot of it is in their head. Uh, what are the types of things that, have you found something that's like the most common uh, 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 challenge that's in their mind that keeps them from having that success? And is there anything in common that you find from with everyone? Yeah, so it's a little bit like, well, of course, right, which is, it's a confidence in their own ability to lead, and a willingness to actually step out of the comfort of not leading, of not being responsible for it all, that keeps them st stuck in really having created a job for themselves. I think that that's really, really actually the thing. We're so used to this mentality of, of employee, even those of us who have started our businesses and are unemployable because we don't, you know, like authority. We start this business, but our entire society is revolved around this idea that you have a job. And so the first thing that entrepreneurs do or business owners do is they create a job for themselves. But you can't actually have a job and be a business owner. Like they are diametrically opposed to the mentality of the two are diametrically opposed to one another. That makes a lot of sense. Right? An employee is looking at the, the weeds 
they're doing their job. They're looking at what they have to get done. As a business owner, you have to look at the forest and it, you, it, you, can't, you can't do it. It's impossible to see both of those at the same time. So they're getting stuck in the doing of the thing and they've ended up making a job for themselves. And at the end of the day, if they stop working and the revenue stops, it's not really a business. It's really just that job. So yeah. what's the, the first step then? What should they do instead to get out of that trap? Okay, so there's really three parts. The very first part is you have to actually be willing to control time. So people often think, well, that's ridiculous. Time is a thing. You can't control time. But we all know that there have been times in our lives where, you know, when you're having a really good time, time stretches out. And when things are going really poorly, you feel forever the other way around, right? Like there's times when time moves really fast and really slow. So we do have some control over time. And the first most important thing that that, that CEOs in this, in this uh, phase have to do is actually get control over their schedule. They have to actually admit that they get distracted and, and schedule distraction, schedule spontaneity, schedule the things so that when you have boundaries around areas, and I, I talk about this kind of like you get, you start with a template that's a blank template, which is, I always start with a blank time blocking template. And you, know, you, you identify the categories of work, and you create blocks in your week to work on those categories. And then what you find is that you actually have spa more space than you thought. Because we just focus on this category, let's say marketing, or this category called business development. You'll find that very rarely do you actually have enough work to fill up the entire segment of time. But you're not allowed to fill it with other work, right? Then all of a sudden there's some space. If you have time in your calendar that says scroll social media for 20 minutes like and you get to do that without feeling guilty and believe it or not it creates a lot of space so then once you have space you have time to work on your business instead of in your business because that's the first piece and then the second piece is make that cash register ring what are the things that you have to do to create more cash more sales more clients and that's all about, you know, you get to this place where when you started, you first identified ideal clients, you identified your offer, you identified that. But now that you've been doing it for a while, you actually have results, you have data. You refine all those, those areas. Who really is your ideal client now that you've been working for this long and you've produced this many results? What are the results that you're actually the best at producing? What is the highest value of those results to whom? And you figure all that out and then you start actually honing in on okay, and creating business development habits on a weekly basis where you're creating relationships with potential clients and with power partners and with you know, peripheral colleagues or wh whoever's going to have some sort of influence. And when you make something a habit, okay, this is where the woo comes in, right? Because I'm in Portland, so I have a little woo. <laughs> the energy starts to flow. And, and things start to move. It's not so stuck. And once things start to move, then you can start to create momentum just simply by creating a habit. And that habit is written into your calendar. So then the third thing, now you're making, so now you've got some more time and now you're making some money or more money. And so there's some energy flowing. And then it's about really stepping into leadership. But, you know, when we talk about this, because this is a topic of conversation, right? We talk about this stuff all the time. People have an idea of what leader means when they look outside themselves, because we're always comparing ourselves to others. Oh, well, that's an amazing leader. And the next thought after that is, I could never be that. That's not me. I don't have, you know, that's not my personality. That's not my this. That's not my this. What people really have to see and own is that everybody is a leader. In, can be a leader use it with their specific strengths. Like you don't have to be special or different or somebody else to step into who you are as a leader. When you bring yourself to leadership as that third component, what happens all of a sudden is you discover that you own your business instead of your business owning you. I like that. And I can really see how those three simple phases really can bring a lot of clarity. And I liked how, how you said like, hey, 
you kind of said, schedule the chaos, allow yourself that time to, but schedule it, which is very specific and really sage advice. I, I, I always joke around with my friends, like when they're miserable, I'm like, can we like schedule that misery and let's have fun now? And like, let's just put that in a box and take it out, out the misery box later. <laughs> but that's, I guess it really does make sense. Dana, tell us a little bit about what inspired you to become a business strategist and a coach. Like, how did you get started? Um, honestly, by accident. So uh, when I was 27, I promised myself I would never work for anybody else again. I got really clear that I was unemployable. I'm now, I'm about to turn 61 and I've kept that promise. But the first 10 years, it turns out that I was being a mom. I didn't know that was going to happen, but three children later and I move across the country. And then I really needed to get away from my kids because we homeschooled. And as much as I love them and believe in freedom of education, I couldn't be around them 24 seven. So I started where a lot of women who are homemakers start, which is in a party plan business or in direct sales. I sold kitchen tools for 10 years and it was fun. And I made a little bit of money and I grew a team and I learned about communication and support and empowerment and how to have people, other people outside of me succeed. And then I got divorced and got remarried and to a man who has no kids. And he was like, you know, you need a real job. I was like, hmm, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> so I switched companies and I started selling sex toys for, and I sold sex toys for 10 years. And I was the number one in sales, number one recruiter in the country for my company five years in a row. Um, and I learned a lot about not only empowering a teammate to grow and create business for themselves and find their own power, but in coaching my clients in their relationships and in the bedroom. And I got really bored of selling vibrators. Um, it became like selling toothpaste, right? I just, it was just boring. It was, it, it was really fun at first, but it just started being very much the same. There was no challenge and I was floundering. And that is when a, a really, really amazing human who was a friend um, and a co- and a acquaintance at the time called me up and said, you know, I've been watching you. I can see that you're floundering. I can see you're trying to figure out what the next step is. So I'd like to just tell you my point of view. Like, okay. She said, honestly, me, and she named a few other people. We've been waiting for you to hang a shingle out as a coach. You're one of the best coaches I've ever seen. And after I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I started laughing because I had no idea how to make money in this business. So she showed me, and that was almost eight years ago. And I have never been happier. Like the impact that I have on my clients and the 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 pleasure that it gives me to see them succeed, not just in the time that we're working together, but years later, because they they stay and they come back and they come back and they grow. And it's it's almost as good as being a mother. (laughs) like watching people blossom into what's really possible for them. It's so cool. Dana, I, I love that story. And you know, it's very serendipitous, isn't it? How you, you had someone in your life that will point that out to you. I'm still waiting for somebody to point out what I should be when I grow up, you know, or where my talents lie. That was very serendipitous and you're blessed to have that. But, you know, another thing that I, I just noticed what you mentioned is You've been in so many different fields, and it's a great illustration of the principles of success really never change. Before I ask you my last question and get people to connect with you, can you speak to that? Like the principles of success and building a business and growing it, are they transferable? A hundred percent. I actually think that it's one of the things that, you know, there are, I'm going to say this and you may get some hate for it, but whatever. So there are people who like really want to have a job. Like they're, where they blossom is when they get to go to work, do a particular job, go home and live their life. And then there are people who cannot do that. And I call those of us who are like that, we're just unemployable. Like we just cannot do a job. Those people, it really doesn't matter what the business is. It really doesn't matter what you're doing. It's the drive to be independent, to succeed. For me, and you know, my highest value is freedom. 
And when I when I say freedom, I really mean I want to be able to I want to be free to do what I want with whom I want, when I want, where I want, period. Like I want to be in control. And it's that that visceral need to live up to that, to the freedom part, to being in control of my own destiny that makes me succeed no matter what. I have, my friends and I actually joke all the time about how as an, as an entrepreneur, the biggest fear is that it's all gonna come tumbling down tomorrow. And that brings on these, you know, visions of not being able to feed our families and, and or worse. But when it really comes down to it, because we have these skills, we know how to make money. We know how to make things happen. That fear is actually not real. It's made up for most of us. Because really, at, no matter what happens, if I have to get a job selling, I can sell what I do really well. And that gives me, that, though, that's a strategy for success that transcends whatever it is that you're doing. I can see that focusing on that, that high level skill can, and gaining that, those capabilities gives you that confidence that you can go pretty much anywhere. Dana, for our listeners out there that can, that resonate with you and are like, man, I, I really would like to connect with her. How do they find you, connect with you and learn more? Okay. So there's two real places that are easy to connect with me. Go to, you can go to my website, danacorey.com. Um, and that's D-A-N-A-C-O-R-E-Y and find out about me, read about me and send me a message that way. Or honestly, I'm going to tell you, I hang out on Facebook. It's like my neighborhood and I'm not talking a business page, like my personal profile. Come friend me, send me a message, say that you heard me on Mark's show um, and connect with me. I am always about meeting new, interesting people. Fantastic. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Dana, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time and sharing the sage advice here with my audience. And I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. Thanks for having me so much, Mark. It's been really fun. Dana Corey, business strategist and coach, founder of Dana Corey Coaching. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where professionals in private practice, business owners, and entrepreneurs publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining us.